Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the LH Singer post assembly and fine tuning and seeing what this fast, no really fast, printer can do. Stick with me and let's get started. I wanted a project that wasn't another Vorum and I wanted to try my hand at something new. So when Pfizer agreed to provide the LH Stinger kit, I was excited to get right into it. This printer takes most of the things you think you know about 3D printer assembly and just throws it out the window. Building the LH Stinger was a time consuming process. Not least because I filmed the entire thing, but it's also a lot of new concepts that someone like me that's only ever built a basic bed slinger and Voron Core XY machines and never a tried belted all wheel drive 48 volt rear bed slinger. I filmed an unboxing video with the Stinger a few months ago, which you can find linked here or in the video description. There are a few major steps that take time to assemble. The electronics enclosure was quite a lengthy process, and then there's bonding the Y axis frame with epoxy resin. It takes at least 12 hours to cure, none of these detract from it being a fun and exciting build. I really got my teeth into this one, and it was just so refreshing to be building something completely new. Not just yet another iteration of an already designed machine. The build quality of a kit built printer is generally down to how well you assemble it. However, the kit does need to provide decent quality components and decent instructions in order for you to achieve this. Whilst the LH Stinger documentation has a ways to go before a novice could assemble it, if you know your way around the CAD model and the already very good instructions, you'll have no problems getting the printer assembled. The LH Stinger project has an incredible community behind it already for such an infant project. It's growing exceptionally fast and via the official Discord server, probably a link below. People are more than happy to help out, with LH himself jumping into off to offer support very frequently. During my build, I've advised of possible improvements and worked with Lima to improve documentation, models, and contribute a few modifications of my own that can be seen later in the video. Diving into the printer hardware, the Sting has several customizable components, not least the extruder and the hot end. My kit included Fizex Sherpa CNC extruder with a Fetus Dragon Ultra High Flow Hot End. The build volume of this printer is 200mm cubed, with sky's the limit speeds and accelerations. The Stinger sets a very high bar for bed slinger printers, with performance and quality unmatched even by many Core XY machines. The key features that all Stingers include is the highest quality components, such as gates, belts and pulleys, Fushi bearings, high torque, high voltage motors, and Z1 preload linear rails. The printer includes a dual motor all wheel drive belted Y axis with dual MGN 12 linear rails, a carbon fiber bed carriage and build surface, and an ultra lightweight polyamide flexible heating element, which allows the bed of this bed slinger to move at incredible speeds whilst maintaining a smooth linear motion. Keeping the Y axis smooth and precise isn't all that the LH Slinger offers. The Z-axis is driven by dual NEMA 17 stepper motors on MGN12 linear rails too. Moved by gauge GT2 belts with a 4 to 1 gear ratio for smooth motion on the axis. The printer also includes the Annex Engineering Quick Draw Pro, which enables the printer to perform adaptive bed mesh leveling and Z-tilt to ensure the perfect first layer every time. The X-axis is driven by a single 48 volt high torque NEMA 17 with a double shear support to ensure accuracy at speed. The opposite end of the X-axis houses a Gage GT2 idler pulley. An all-wheel drive conversion kit is in the making and should be released in the coming months, adding an additional drive motor to the X-axis to give it the same unparalleled performance as the Y-axis. The frame of the LH Stinger is the most rigid of any 3D printer I've seen today, utilising mostly 30mm T-slot aluminium profile as high as 3090 and fully assembled using M5 hardware and high strength brackets for the extreme stability this ring requires. No stone was left unturned in the pursuit of perfection with the development of the LH Stinger. With quality at speed being at the heart of the development of the LH Stinger, the LH Stinger wasn't designed to throw at a benchy shaped object or win any speed benchy records, but rather enable its owners to produce rapid prototypes and functional prints without the compromise on quality. That's not to say it can't produce a decent quality benchy in around 5 minutes, but it's best suited to rapid prototyping, such as this macro keypad base I printed in PLA in around 20 minutes that speeds upwards of 600mm per second. 
As you can see here, the quality is above average and perfect for prototyping with perfect dimensional accuracy. The LH Stinger was developed with input shaping in mind. Every change was made to improve results and this is how it got to be the machine that it is. Whilst assembly and tuning can be cumbersome, the outcome is unmatched. Here you can see the shaper results of the LH Stinger suggesting accelerations and over 50k on the y-axis, which is mostly unheard of in the bed slinger community, with many ender style printers struggling to reach 10k accelerations on the y-axis out of the box. As with any DIY 3D printer, your print quality depends on your assembly quality for the most part. However, here are a few examples of prints I've completed in PLA using the LH Stinger to demonstrate its strengths. The clock spring toaster torture test is a challenging print for any 3D printer, with tolerances, overhangs, bed adhesion and bridging tested to their limits. I'm happy with how this came out with all of the tolerance cogs and doors working, the toast pops nicely and the overhang results are near perfect all the way up to 70 degrees, with some grouping on the 80 degree test. The amazing part? This was printed in just over two and a half hours. By comparison, to print at the same quality with comparable settings, it's an easy 5 hour print on my Vora 2.4. My 5 minute speed benchy attempt wasn't perfect, but then it wasn't expected to be. But this planter that printed in just under 12 minutes in Vars mode came out incredible. During speed tests I was able to achieve around 1150mm per second at 110k acceleration with a square corner velocity of 95mm per second. I started to see skip steps only on the x-axis where the LH Stinger has only got a single step motor. Q my latest upgrade an all-wheel drive x-axis. Fizet were gracious enough to sponsor these components and all being well will be offering a complete upgrade kit in the next few months. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to see how far we can push the LH Stinger once all-wheel drive is implemented on the x-axis. Making a printer move fast is no longer the biggest challenge in fast 3D printing. Although making a printer move fast and remain accurate is a challenge, the biggest challenge is cooling the plastic that's melted. That's why the LH Stinger comes with dual 5015 part cooling fans, but also has an auxiliary part cooling fan consisting of dual 9733 blower fans with integrated flexible airflow flaps. The auxiliary cooling provides an incredible amount of airflow and rapidly cools the plastic where the part cooling fans cannot keep up. The Stinger was designed to be enclosed, but it's better not exceeding its footprint to allow for easy enclosure, but also to aid in enclosing the printer and allowing high chamber temperatures. The electronics are enclosed in their own auxiliary box away from the printer, with only a breakout board included on the printer. There are no MCUs within the printer's frame. The tool head of the Stinger contains no tool head board. The wiring all runs down to the breakout board, where it connects to be extended over to the electronics box. The E-Box is composed of printed parts and is designed to be compact and provide great airflow for the components inside. The 5160 stepper drivers do get hot. Enclosed within this box you can find dual power supplies providing 24 and 48 volts for the printer and control board. In my case the Fizek H723, your Raspberry Pi or alternative and the dual 6025 fans to cool everything in this compact little box. You can see here a few of the modifications I made and contributed to the Stinger project, including the spider mainboard bracket, a 90 degree Pi mount and the end plate that exposes the Raspberry Pi's I.O. port. All three of these modifications can be found on the official LH Stinger GitHub repo on the user mod directory. My only gripe here is that it could use some feet printing in TPU or some rubber feet adding to the e-box, as the vibrations from the printer can cause the box to shift if placed on a less than stable surface. When I released my unboxing video, I received comments such as, for the same money you can buy a bamboo. This is true, but as is the fact that you can buy a Bentley for the same ballpark as a Lamborghini, it doesn't make it better, just a different demographic. The idea of a no compromise printer negates the race to the bottom mentality of most manufacturers. This printer is expensive because it's composed of the very best hardware, and of course, it's also fully open source. That being said, the printer does offer exceptional value for money when you consider the components you get within the kit. For around £600 at the time of filming, you're getting a laser cut carbon fibre bed, a genuine Fatus Dragon hot end, genuine Gates belts and pulleys, Fushi bearings on all components. Self sourcing this machine would likely cost even more. Comparing the LH Stinger to my three Voron printers, its print quality is better in many tests. 
and it comes with pre-made configs and author slicer profiles included in the repo, so it's ready to print as soon as you've finished assembly and tuning. So to wrap it all up, would I recommend the LH Stinger 3D printer? Yes. This printer redefines what a bed slinger can achieve, combining speed, quality and precision in a way that challenges even the best Core XY machines. From the assembly process to the final print, the LH Stinger offers an exciting and rewarding experience for anyone looking to dive into high performance 3D printing. If you're ready to take your 3D printing to the next level, the LH Stinger is a fantastic choice and it's a powerful, customizable machine backed by a passionate community and packed with top tier components. Whether you're a seasoned printer or someone looking for a new challenge, this printer will not disappoint you. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this review, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated with my latest videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you and I do my best to respond to all comments. If you'd like an LH Stinger of your own, then I've included affiliate links in the video description to the Pfizer kit and all additional products needed. These links cost you nothing to use, but give a little something to the channel to help support these projects. And for a very limited time, Pfizer has provided a small discount to my viewers, which you can find in the video description. If you like this video, then you'll probably like this video, where I reviewed the Voron V0, or the unboxing of the LH Stinger from Pfizer, 